for having me. I will uh, bother you with some slides. I hope we'll uh, see them in a sec. And I want to talk to you about um, rapid change and our cognitive problems with it. This is, so this is an example from psychology, my area of expertise uh, from the cognitive reflection test by Shane Frederick. In a day, in a lake, there is a patch of lilies. Every day the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long would it take for the patch to cover half the lake? I'll give you five seconds to think about it. So the correct answer is 47. It takes 47 days for the first half of the lake to be covered and one day for the second half. That is exponential growth, right? So if you got it wrong, don't worry. Tens of thousands of people have, have done this and about half of them get it wrong. And if you thought 24 days, you're with the majority of these people. So what people do when they solve tasks like this is that they, they use a linear appro approximation for an exponential problem. And that is not working. That's, uh, 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 this is the most text-heavy slide, so don't worry. Um, this is from Daniel Kamen's book, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. We have two separate modes of recognition. One is fast, effort, uh, effortless, automatic, quick, intuitive. And that's what leads to the answer 24. If you use the other route and, and calculate and think, that's system two. System one is very good at a lot of things. I couldn't be standing here talking without falling down without my system one. But it's a very, very bad advisor when it comes to exponential growth, which means we get surprised by it all the time. This is a visual example. Uh, cells separating. We're about at half time now, still pretty slow. And this is the acceleration at the end, and boom, the whole Petri dish is filled with a bacteria. So the growth is slow initially, slower than linear growth, and very fast later on. That's exponential growth for you. And we are very, very bad at understanding this. We are bad at comprehending and predicting nonlinear change, but it is all around us. And Hidalgo actually mentioned this, this, this morning that climate scientists keep being surprised by the rapid changes in the climate system. That is an example of exactly this. Domain experts keep getting surprised when exponential change is involved. This next slide uh, shows, uh, uh, maybe I can have that up there. This is uh, the growth in computing power over the last uh, decades. This looks like a linear trend, but it's, it's a uh, logarithmic scale, so this is really an exponential function. This is, of course, Moore's law, and most of you are familiar with this. We've had exponential growth in digital technology for 60, 70 years now. Um, this is something people maybe are less familiar with. This is the cost of sequencing one human genome from 2001, $100 million, to today, little under $1,000. This is exponential decline. And it's, as you can see here in comparison, it's faster than Moore's law. So biotechnology is accelerating faster right now than digital technology. This is digital technology again. These are large systems for uh, interpreting stuff, uh, recognizing images, playing computer games, playing board games, and so on. And again, this looks like a linear trend. That this is the computing power that these systems encompass. It's not the same as Moore's Law. It's mainly, it's money being poured into these systems. The acceleration there is a doubling rate of about three and a half months. So Moore's law is about every two years, we have a doubling. With AI, which is what this is, we have a doubling approximately every three and a half months right now. Again, which is a lot of it is due uh, to money being spent. And I'll show you who spends this money. Um, all of the red ones here are projects of Google. Of course, there's a lot of Chinese stuff missing there, going back to Frank's talk just now, because the Chinese just don't publish as much of the, what they're doing as, as everybody else. So nonlinear change creates perceived discontinuities. We are surprised by it all the time. And I'll show you some examples from technology. This is Lisa Dole. You probably know this example. Best Go player in the world in 2016. He played AlphaGo, a system devised by Google's subsidiary DeepMind. 
the goal uh, elite of the world, uh, including a, a, an acquaintance of mine in Hamburg who I, I, I sought out for this, uh, this story, um, a former world champion, female world champion, they were all convinced that Lisa Dole would win because they had seen AlphaGo play against a, a, a weaker player before. And I talked to uh, this uh, European Go expert who, who knows Lisa Dole from the boarding school that they went to together, for the, the, the Go boarding schools in Korea. And I talked to her after the first game and she said this, AlphaGo made moves that no human player would ever have made. So this is a, an AI system that learned to play Go and devised strategies that are new in a game that's two and a half thousand years old. Th there was another a Chinese player who said, oh, but, but, but he beat the old man, uh, uh, Lee Zedou was 30 at the time. Of course, uh, the machine beat the old man, let me play him. He was the, the new world champion, 21 years old, KG from, from China. And he played uh, Alpha Zero the next year. Alpha Zero didn't actually have any human-based training material. It just learned playing Go by playing itself. And next slide, please. From the picture, you can guess what happened. Um, KG said after the game, last year it was still quite human-like when it played, but this year it became like a god of Go. So domain experts being surprised by the results of exponential change. That, that's what this is. Different area, Google again, sorry. There's a competition called CASP where it, the question is how does a specific strand of DNA translate into a protein? It's a very, very important question for all of biotechnology, including vaccine development, by the way. Uh, DeepMind uh, took part in that competition for the first time in 2018. Won with flying colors, beat everybody else in that field, this is a quote from a scientist from Harvard who was there. What just happened was a question put to me in exactly these words by at least one researcher at CASP and a sentiment expressed by most academics I spoke with. Again, domain experts being blown out of the water by exponential change. Two years later, the follow-up system beat uh, the, uh, the comp uh, competition again, and this time by such a wide margin that the founder, or one of the founders of the competition said, this is a 50-year-old problem, I never thought I'd see this in my lifetime. So these, and it's another exponential uh, bundle of curves, these are all patents that, that relate to AI in some way or other. This is li life and medical sciences. A lot of, actually this ties back to Frank's uh, uh, talk just now, a lot of these uh, uh, patents are, come from China now, the bulk, actually, of these patents come from China. So expect to see more surprising things happening in the overlapping area of AI and biotechnology and many other areas as well, of course. So we have exponential growth and exponential change in technology in many uh, places. We are pretty bad at understanding what this means. And we are pretty bad at knowing that we are bad at understanding what it means. Like this is a quote from a study, people exhibit substantial exponential growth bias, that's the technical term. More importantly, they are overconfident in their ability to answer questions that involve exponential growth. So basically we think we can do it, but we can't. Which is a problem, of course, because here's the thing. So, this is urban population since 750, 1750. Uh, this is primary energy use, this is water use, this is transportation, this is telecommunications, this is international tourism, and I, I think you notice the pattern, right? If you, you know or you're familiar with the shape of these curves now, nitrous oxide, uh, potent uh, greenhouse gas uh, concentration in the atmosphere, coastal nitrogen, which is a result of uh, fertilization, agriculture, uh, and so on, so we have too much nitrogen in our water. Tropical forest loss, it looks like there's a slight slowdown, but obviously this is not nearly enough. That curve would have to change course. And this, of course, is a carrier wave for most of this. Real GDP, because what a lot of people actually, and I've even spoken to economists who weren't aware of this, not many, but some, some aren't. If you have constant uh, percentual growth, like 2% growth, 3% growth a year, that yields an exponential curve. 2% a year makes an economy double in size in 36 years. 
3% a year makes a double in size in 24 years. There's a rule of 72. If you divide 72 by the, by the, uh, the growth rate, you get the doubling time. So our economies keep growing, and by doing that, create all these other kind of worrying exponential curves. Most worrying of all is this one, of course. And I don't have to explain this. So, uh, of course, global climate change, along with um, accelerating extinction of, uh, of many species, are the two biggest problems that humanity faces right now. And, of course, that is interlinked with a lot of what we've heard about today. It's interlinked with a crisis of democracy in some areas. It's interlinked with totalitarianism, because a lot of these totalitarian regimes that we heard so much about this morning, I mean, Russia, Saudi Arabia, what, what do they, the economies have in common? Right? So th there's a big correlation between aut authoritarianism and, and destroying the planet, and business models that destroy the planet, which is why the Republicans are the party of climate change denial, basically. Um, so these are all were very worrying exponential curves, but, and I'll show you some more, this is the, the, the whole set of uh, indicators from the uh, International Geosphere Biosphere Project, this is not my slide, The Great Acceleration is a paper from 2015. Um, they've been tracking all these indicators, not all of them are growing exponentially, and not all of them are terrifying, but some of them are. And I'll show you a good one. This is a quote from... Uh, the inventor of the GDP, who got a Nobel Prize for his work on economic growth, Simon Kuznets, he wrote, in the 60s, goals for more growth should specify more growth of what and for what. And we're still not there, right? Every time you hear a politician say, we are aiming for this and this amount of growth, he's still or she is still talking about GDP, and GDP growth is not a good measure of welfare. Even the OECD, founded for fostering economic growth agrees. Good growth is this. This is uh, another uh, exponential function, uh, but a good one. It's installed solar energy capacity in the last decades on planet Earth, and again, you see exponential trends. Again, you see the bulk of this is right now is happening in China. But of course, this is the kind of growth we need. This is basically looking at the same uh, issue from another perspective. Um, sh show the slide again, please. It's, it's, it's a price of basically a kilowatt hour of, of solar energy from the uh, 70s to today. And again, this is a, a logarithmic axis. So this is an exponential drop in price. Solar energy in many parts of the world is now the cheapest source of energy by far. Cheaper than coal, cheaper than everything else. And interestingly, we're coming back to the beginning now. This, again, creates, uh, creates perceived discontinuities in experts. These are some sort of the, the green lines here represent predictions by experts, e economists, uh, energy experts, saying, okay, this is the floor cost, right? It can't get any cheaper than this. Like every other year, there's a study that says, okay, but, but this, this is where it stops, okay? This is where solar energy can't possibly get any cheaper. And you're seeing what's happening. Right? Like this exponential decline in price is smashing through these floor cost predictions again and again and again. So perceived discontinuities, but of the kind that we really need. So to sum up, exponential growth is everywhere. Expect more perceived discontinuities. Expect to be surprised again and again. Thank you. <laughs>